The Greenskins update is finally here, and with it comes new campaign changes, new units, and updates to existing units. Unfortunately, I can't show you any of the new units just yet, but I can show you what they've done to some of the old lords to make them better. Although I'm currently misleading you, as Wurzag is one of the only lords that hasn't actually been touched and is basically the same. Either way, let me show you the ones that have been changed. We'll begin at the bottom with the Goblin Big Boss, who is technically a hero, not a lord. And while he's basically the same, he now comes with a new ability, They Needs Stabbing, which is a 29 second hex which reduces armor and melee defense of a lord or hero. So it's really going to turn him into a little bit more of an assassin so he can go after those characters and potentially get some extra damage on them with this. It could also help him play his bodyguard role if he's reducing the defenses of whoever his lord may be fighting. So a nice addition for the goblin big boss to give him a little bit more purpose. And to the orc war boss, a lord that doesn't really see too much action unfortunately, but now he comes with a new ability, smash him faster, which gives plus 24 melee attack and plus 16 leadership to himself and all nearby units. This will make him great for supporting strong front lines. If you've got a bunch of black orcs, whack this in there alongside a wire and everything else, it's gonna make him pretty deadly in the combo. And he still has his boar and wyvern mounts. Now to something that could basically be considered a new unit, the Catchweb Spider Shrine Mount for the Goblin Great Shaman. This is basically just an Arachnorok spider mount for said Lord, which is a really nice addition to the Greenskins Lord lineup as we don't really have any big large Lords. The closest before was probably Azag on his Wyvern. But now we have this big old spider which does lots of damage, it's anti-large, it can charge around all over the place with its high mass, so it's really going to bring something new to the Greenskins Lord area because we don't really have any tough tanky type damage soak Lords. Although that being said, in campaign it will have a few more abilities affecting Winds of Magic, Costs and Cooldown. And as for the Goblin Great Shaman himself, he comes with a new ability called Don't Even Try It, which is a direct damage spell designed for a single target, so much like Spirit Leech or something like that, but it does increase ability recharge time by 15 seconds, giving the Goblin Great Shaman even more reason to see some action on the battlefield. Now, what about good old Skarsnik? Did he get any love with this update? Well, he did, but only in the form of one single ability, but quite a powerful ability it is. Fermented Fungi is a 36 second hex which reduces melee defense by 24 and causes the unit it's targeted on to go into Rampage. So they lose control and it'll just be running around doing whatever it wants for 36 seconds, which is very powerful, especially when it comes to using it on Lords. If they're in a bad situation, you'll be able to keep them in that bad situation potentially. So a pretty powerful ability for Skarsnik to have. And he's not the only one that has this though. The Night Goblin Warboss, the cheapest of all Greenskins Lords, also has this ability, Fermented Fungi. What's more for him as well is that he has the Tormentor Sword item, so he can have an ability that locks people in place and an ability that makes them go into Rampage. What's more, he also has another new ability called Deboss's Loons, which, well, does this. So lots of tricksy traps that could cause problems for enemy lords especially, giving the Night Goblin Warboss a little bit more potential to get some use than before. Now for Azag the Slaughterer, a lord who didn't get too much love before, but now he should get a plenty, as he's got two new items. One is Azag's Ard Armor, which gives plus 30 armor and plus 24 melee defense for himself and nearby surrounding units, so that's a nice defensive buff. And then for an offensive buff, you've got Slagger's Slashers, which will give plus 10 melee attack and plus 4 leadership to himself and nearby units. So this moves Azag into kind of more of a supportive Lord role, which is pretty nice and something a little bit different from other Greenskins Lords. Also because he has that flying mount, he's the only flying unit that the Greenskins have, allowing him to move around the battlefield quickly and easily to support the army where needed. What's also nice as well for Azag on Skullmuncher is that he's finally gained some melee defense. Before, he only had 24 melee defense on Skullmuncher, which was pretty bad considering other similar kinds of units on Manticores and things had 30 plus. So now he's got some more, it'll make him that little bit better surviving and hopefully make him a more viable Lord pick. And finally, what about the big man himself, Grimgore Ironhide? Well, he is bigger and harder than ever. Quite literally, I think his model is actually bigger now, so he looks a lot more beefy. Now for his abilities, he's lost Stand Your Ground, but instead has Get Back Here, and his other abilities have been replaced by some far superior ones. Best of the best and You're Next. 
Best of the best is a ward save that is activated whenever a lord or hero is near him and it gives him plus 10 melee defense and plus 11 damage resistance. So that is very nice, gonna help Grimgore survive much better when fighting other characters or getting gooned on by more than one character. And your next is a debuff that can be cast on enemy lords and heroes. It reduces their melee attack by 24, their speed by 48%, and most importantly, their melee defense by 40. So this is gonna give Grimgore a damn good chance of landing hits and make him do a lot more damage. Also the reduction in speed means they won't be able to get away in a hurry as it does last 24 seconds and it reduces their melee attack to protect him a little bit too. And for his items he still has Gitsnik but he now has his blood forged armor from the campaign as well which is an activatable explosion that only harms enemy troops and also gives him 30 armor as well. So this is going to be really useful for him to use that to blow enemy troops out of the way so he can run away from things if he's in trouble. Again just helping him survive as foot lords can be very vulnerable. Does this stuff actually help Grimgore though and make him the best? Well, I have a video for that as well. You can check it out at the end. We'll test out whether Grimgore can take out some other strong lords. And one last thing that is just a cosmetic change. Black Orcs are finally black. They've always been red, which never really made sense because they're called Black Orcs. But now they're actually black with a little bit of Alliance colouring. And if you've ever seen the 8th edition army guide of orcs and goblins, you'll know that there's a picture of them black and they look freaking cool. So now they're actually black and they're not some kind of knockoff crimson killers. So there we go. All the changes to the lords of the greenskins with the upcoming rework of the greenskins. So there it is. I've made a bunch of other videos for this rework release. Do check them out here if you wish. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this and I will see you in the future.